Dear Hooked on Phonics, reading was one of the most difficult subjects for our son. It was a frustrating problem that even began to affect his self-esteem. Hooked on Phonics ended our struggle. The difference in his self-confidence is obvious to everyone, especially his teachers. Thanks to Hooked on Phonics, we now feel more confident as parents, too. Signed, J.H. Emporia, Virginia. For Hooked on Phonics plus SRA Reading Laboratories, call 1-800-ABCDEFG. This is WGBR News, Goldsboro's very own. Good afternoon at 1.30, it's 73 degrees. I'm Dory Roberts. The mother of three children in the Wayne County Public School System, and who is a school volunteer, asked at last night's forum on site-based management of schools, just what is the most effective job for her, and got this reply from Dr. Bill Church, the director for Technical Assistance Centers. Now, what I'm going to say you're not going to probably want to hear. I think the first thing is to be the very best parent and the very best support for the youngsters in your home. Dr. Bill Church answering Mrs. Karen Stewart at last night's forum on site-based management of schools to improve student learning. It was suggested to Goldsboro Kiwanians yesterday by John Grady of Contractors and Engineers that there's been a rush to set aside common sense in environmental rules and regulations from groundwater standards to the protection of spotted owls. One pair of spotted owl mates requires an area that has about 25 million dollars worth of timber on it. That's just one pair of them. And when the spotted owl got protected, the prices of lumber, those of you who are in the house building or house selling business know that in the last year the price of lumber has gone up two times. So this is another way you're affected by these spotted owls. John Grady of Contractors and Engineers. He offered the spotted owl as one only, only one example and described some rules as ridiculous. The newly negotiated process for monitoring social service compliance for delivery of client services under the lawsuit Alexander v. Flaherty seems to be a little more agency friendly. That was the consensus at yesterday's Wayne Social Services board meeting after Administrator Marie Melpass detailed the new process. She explained, for example, that the Social Services Department could have been charged a maximum of $650 per case reopened if anything proper should be found in reviewing that case. Under the negotiated process, we'll pay a maximum penalty of only $200. Mrs. Malpass cited another advantage in that monitoring for timely service to clients that was supposed to have begun in October on a quarterly basis will be done on a different basis to catch up the monitoring. Board Chairman Carolyn Russell observed, we're doing a little better than we thought we would. Mrs. Malpass's response? Could have been worse. Time now for a look at our forecast from the Weather Center. Our chance of rain will continue to increase the rest of today, despite the fact that we've seen more sun than expected and that it's nice and warm out there. In fact, highs will be reaching the uh, 70 to 75 range for most of you. There will be an increasing chance of showers today as temperatures warm up and convective-type showers develop. Um, tonight and tomorrow, clouds with rain and possibly thunderstorms. Lows tonight, 50 to 55. Highs tomorrow, 65 to 70. I'm Bill Schmidt at the Weather Center. Thanks, Bill. Right now, it's 73 degrees as we return to the Rush Limbaugh Show on WGBR. Rush Limbaugh. Another scream of joy emanating from another satisfied, ecstatic listener. EIB Network, 800-282-2882. Have you heard it? Have you listened to it in there? Is it, uh, is it worth uh, using? It is uh, poor quality. Well, just hey, tell you what. Let's hey, let me go back to this guy in Fort Lauderdale, and then we'll deal. With, is uh, is the president still preoccupied? Oh, oh, they have rejoined the program here in New York. Aha! Uh -huh. Now, for those of you in New York, you have missed one of the finest half hours of broadcasting history. We'll redo it. 
we talked about male lesbians. And, um, oh, there's this many cuts on this? Yeah, yeah, the last one. The last one, okay. Well, that's the only one we want to use, isn't it? The last one. Here, let's go back to Forrest here in Fort Lauderdale. You, you people uh, listening in on uh, WABC in New York, uh, pick up a little bit. here. Uh, Forrest, are you yeah. there? Here, Forrest, here's what you do. That's, I, you should conduct a test. You should proclaim yourself to be a male lesbian and therefore claim that no against, discrimination against you can legally happen. See what happens. And then say, what do you mean, male lesbian? So, well, there's this professor of feminism down at university, or up at the University of South Florida in Tampa who says that uh, because of post-structuralist thinking that there are a lot of uh, lesbians uh, trapped in male bodies, and I think I'm one. Yeah. Do you have the courage for us to try it? Oh, yeah. Do you? You really sound enthused. <laughs> I just think that, uh... Well, that's right. Remember, as our president said in the new national motto for transvestites in America, we must have the courage to change. I think our new national motto ought to come for your book, demonstrating absurdity by being absurd. Uh, that's true. <laughs> well, Forrest, have we answered your questions? Oh, yeah. Do you have any more? No. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the time. All right. It's my pleasure. Great to hear from you. Is that we have a cellular call up there? We do. Let's live, but got to be true to our rules, true to our policy. Cellular calls happen now. Brad in Lexington, Kentucky. Hi. Welcome to the program. Uh, ditto, Rush. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to let you know I'm a sales rep for Emmett Bond Lumber Company, and I yep. uh, love your support in the lumber industry. We need more people like you to make the public aware. These sawmills out there are busting their butts for us, uh, taking price cuts. Uh, right now the price is going up for them for the first time in a long time, but thanks to your public awareness, I just wanted to pass, all, pass along a thank you. You bet. The sawmills of America busting what? their butts for you. Would you do us one favor? What's Why that? is that tape on timber harvesting? I'm on the road quite a bit, and when I hear it, I love it. You want to hear the timber update? Yes, sir. The only talk show in America where songs are requested. sound another tree hitting the deck not enough uh, we don't I mean we don't have a timber update here folks but uh, it's a request it's a it's a very very popular tune here all right uh, Ron Brown the former chairman of the Democratic National Committee and now the Commerce Secretary in the Clinton administration was speaking in Bluefield West Virginia at a series of one of a series of former uh, forums set up by West Virginia Senator Jay Rockefeller. Our affiliate WHIS in Bluefield and Kurt Pickering phoned in some actualities of uh, Mr. Brown, and so I guess he was asked some questions today. Uh, we must stress, ladies and gentlemen, that the quality of these cuts, I'm told I haven't heard them, of course, because I'm here hosting the show, but uh, my staff has listened to these, and apparently the quality is not the best. It requires a lot of attention. You have to, 
would probably not hurt to turn up your uh, radio. Uh, let's just play cut five. You have them separately? Are they all... Let's play... Have you listened to them all or just... just yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. That's right. All right. Uh, former chairman of Democratic National Committee, Ron Brown, and now Commerce Secretary, was asked about my $1 million bet with the Democratic National Committee, my challenge to put a million dollars of their own behind the Clinton economic plan. I have said that it won't work. And I have put up a million dollars of my money saying that it won't work, and I have urged them to put up a million dollars of theirs. And the winner gets to direct the loser's million to the charity of the winner's choice. It is my contention that several key economic indicators will be in worse shape on January 195 if Clinton gets what he wants here, including unemployment, inflation, uh, uh, interest rates, and the national or the deficit will be up, and Clinton's ratings in the polls will be 45 points or down. And I've stated time and time again, this would be a great thing for them to do if they're so confident that their plan's going to work. Here you can get rid of me, you can get rid of what I believe, you can discredit both, and bam, oh, you're home free. And what's the million going to cost them? All they got to do is have an anti-Limbaugh fundraiser. They probably sell it out in a half hour, raise their million bucks, and it, it would be no sweat. Still, no official response, but here's Ron Brown, and I haven't heard it. We're going to hear this together, responding to the terms of my bet. i got one more statement, sir. If y'all so sure your plan is going to work, how come no one took the Rush Limbaugh's proposal up? Rush Limbaugh. Rush is an entertaining fellow. Thank God he's not President of the United States, though. Moderate amount of applause. Uh, sounds like few in the room actually laughed. At the, it was polite applause at best, but still no response to the to the bet, folks. No response. Only you know, Rush Limbaugh's a very entertaining fellow. Thank God he's not president, and I'm sure he means that too. The press conference is over. Welcome back, America. Welcome back to your show. For those of you who have been tuned to the Clinton press conference, how does it feel to have wasted 40 minutes? <clears throat> it's all right. The country was in good hands while he was in the East Room talking to the press. You missed some great things, but we'll retrace our steps for many of you. Specifically, we had a very enlightening conversation about male lesbians. Uh, that I think all of you should hear. So we'll we'll retrace our steps on that. We have another cellular call. Cellular calls are just motoring right on in. Here is Bill from Detroit. Glad you call. Welcome to the EIB network. Yeah, Rush. Yeah. Bill from Detroit, Michigan. Thank you. I just thought this would be something that uh, would be amusing to us. I I was one of the fortunate persons to get in um, infiltrate uh, the health care reform uh, meeting yesterday in Dearborn, Michigan. And during that meeting, about halfway during the meeting, uh, they, the, the panel task force is there uh, giving us the appearance that they're very tentative and they're listening to us in the audience. And here is Donna Shalala. She's sitting up there in the middle of the task force, and she falls asleep. And I wish we could have gotten it on film, but uh, the, the speaker, which was to her left, uh, my right, as I was looking towards the stage, was a position, and he must have heard her snoring because he looked at her and you could see her. He kicked her underneath the table to wake her up. <laughs> That's but, great. And, you know, so you can see that this is all, it was all a great dog and pup show, man. I mean, they had. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, these you you must have heard me earlier in the broadcast today. 
say that all of these little town meetings around the country on health care are nothing but public displays. Oh, they are. They're that not is... for serious, substantive information gathering. Right. These people have already got their minds made up. But I thought it was only Ronald Reagan fell asleep in meetings like this. Oh, no, she did. She did, without, without any doubt. I mean, she fell asleep. And one of the other good things about it is this one lady gave me a story about her business, and she didn't get coverage and everything else. But at the end, she said, listen, I don't care what happens. We need to change the health care in industry and have some kind of reform, but we do not want the government to run it. And that was the largest applaud of the day, believe it or not. Really? And, and the task force actually turned red face, and they were complex. Perplexed. Perplexed. Yeah. Excuse me. On uh, exactly what's going on, so he he rephrased the question, and basically what they said is they want him to regulate it some way. These are the people in the audience, and uh, have it at least run by private, uh, without uh, a government intervention. Yeah. Which is well fantastic. Absolutely. I'm, I'm surprised they convened that kind of people. Uh, these things are usually stacked with people who are going to go in there and... I don't have health care, I don't have a job, and I don't have one. I haven't had a job in 18 months, and I'm your child. You take care of me, and my mother dies. <laughs> and that, you know, they want that going on in the meetings so they can evoke all this sympathy from people who see these things. Yeah, we need action. We've got a crisis. We've got a health care crisis. We've got to move. Because if you show people in pain, boy, it tugs your heartstrings. It works. And it just gives. I'm surprised that... Anyway, uh, Bill, you live in Detroit. Just keep a sharp eye out for Kevorkian. We'll be back after this. You're listening to the EIB Network. There are a lot of conservatives out there, a lot of conservatives like me on radio, a lot of conservatives on TV, and a lot of conservatives who write what they think. So, what's the definitive source of conservative thought other than me? Why, my friends, it's the Conservative Chronicle. This is a weekly publication. You get 52 issues a year. It's only $39. You know what it is? It's the epitome of the heart of conservatism. All the nationally syndicated conservative columnists in this country and their work reprinted in this, uh, in this publication every week. There's no single source, no better source you can refer to. If you keep every issue, you are building a database that's accessible by a very detailed table of contents of some of the finest profound conservatism ever assembled. The Conservative Chronicle, 39 bucks a year. Here's the number to call, 800 888 That's 1-800-888-3039. Call them now. Scott Motor Company has been selling and servicing fine motor cars since 1922. And right now, they have the best selection of fine Cadillacs and Pontiacs that they have offered in many years. You can have the elegance of a 93 Cadillac or the excitement of a new Pontiac at a special deal now. Scott offers rebates up to $2,500 or 4.9% APR financing. Get all the details at Scott Motor Company on the Highway 70 bypass across from the Holiday Inn. While there, see the 93 all-new Fleetwood Cadillac rear-wheel drive. Learn about the safety of a Cadillac, the performance of a Cadillac, especially the North Star system. A motor so dependable that the first tune-up is recommended at 100,000 miles. In that large selection of motor vehicles, you'll see a large selection of minivans, too. In short, Scott Motor Company has the car or minivan that you're thinking about. Scott Motor Company on Highway 70 Bypass, across from the Holiday Inn, Goldsboro.
Crystal Place on Spencer Avenue. It's the backside of the season, and the Hornets are jockeying for position in the NBA playoffs. Every game is important, and tonight the Hornets get down to business with the Houston Rockets. With all-star Larry Johnson and rookie sensation Alonzo Mourning, the Hive is alive, and you've got the hottest ticket in town. Join us when the Hornets and the Rockets take it to the hoop tonight at 725 on your Sports Spectacular Station, 1150 W. GBR. Performing my job with flawless broadcast excellence, this is Rush Limbaugh on WGBR. Rush Limbaugh and the EIB Network, Alex, Greenwich, Connecticut. Hello. Alex? Hi, good afternoon. Hi, thanks for calling. Thank you. First time caller got through on the first shot, and I'm damn proud of it, too. (laughs) Glad you made it. No apologies. Rush, greetings from one of George Bush's favorite hometowns. Yes. Lee Atwater (laughs) said that to me once. (laughs) I'm um, I'm 37. I'm recently married, and I've been doing some retirement planning. I'm an insurance agent by profession. Um, And basically, I'm, I'm not counting on Social Security at all in my retirement planning. Now, I, I agree that people who paid in should get out, you know, some benefit. But I also know that Social Security, when it was originally started, was intended as a supplement and not really as a full pension. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's all this talk about, uh, you know, uh, taxing some of the benefit or, or having some sort of a means test not really fair to the people who've contributed low these many years, but I wonder if you have any thoughts on what uh, on what the solution might be. I know that people my age and clients my age are just not even thinking about it. They're paying into it, they're maxing out, but uh, it, it's got to end somehow, and I wonder if you've... Uh you got any thoughts on it? Well, you know, I do, and it, it, Social Security has become such uh, a part of the fabric of our society. I mean, it's, it, it is the ultimate entitlement. I look ahead and try to attach a little realism to things. I, I don't know how you ever pull Social Security away. I can only think of one way of doing it. And that is, you you announce that 25 or 30 years from now, beginning that year, whatever year you identify it, we are going to end the practice of funding people's retirement. And thereby, we, 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 we give ourselves a generation to plan for it, so that when those people are born way up ahead, that the... the um, the, the truth is out for them, and they know that there, there, there is no such thing. Now, the problem is going to be when that particular generation gets to retirement age, whatever it is then, uh, and, and when they get into situations where not all of them are going to be able to pay for their retirement, not all of them are, how, what, something's going to come along because we are a compassionate society, and if the trend continues that, that, that uh, the elderly and seasoned citizens are, are considered unemployable and, and not as uh, uh, worthwhile as employees because they're going to be more expensive uh, and so forth and so on. So if, if they're going to continue to have the idle time by, by societal mandate, then I, 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 don't, I don't know what we're going to do. Imagine if we decided this. Imagine if we said that when you're between the age of 35 and 50, that's the worst time in the world to have you as an employee. I'm just making this up just for the sake of it. It's the worst time in the world to have you as an employee, and nobody's going to hire you. We as a society determine that you're worthless in that age group. And, and so how do they earn money? How, if you can't work, if you, if you are not capable of working, or if, you, uh, uh, if you've been put out to pasture, or if you've been deemed somehow not worthy of being employed, how do you eat? It, I don't know, it, when you look at it that way, I don't know how you ever solve it. You cannot force people to save, 
because not everybody is going to earn enough in their lifetimes uh, in, a, in a given year or over a number of years to save a sufficient amount to live on for a number of years without work. Do uh, you think the government can, can uh, do something more like going back to the uh, deductible IRAs or, or having, the, you know... I'm all for that. I'm all for I, I weaning as many people from the Social Security payout as possible. I mean, I'm... But that's my general theme. My general theme is, hey, take care of yourself. You'll be much happier, and the odds are you're going to be much wealthier and uh, and therefore much better off. And I'm, I'm for that it, at all levels of human development. I think that ought to be instilled in everybody as soon as we can. But, we, of course, we're going the opposite way now with uh, with this administration. No, oh, this is this this is part of the interwoven fabric of our society. So there's really uh, there's really no way out unless someone has the temerity or someone has the guts to Well, no, the, no there's, a, there's I'd say there could be a revolt if you look at population trends. And if if our societal habits don't change with the number of abortions that take place and our declining birth rate those those combined those two things combined are going to provide us with a smaller workforce a smaller workforce is therefore going to be taxed individually much greater than they are now sure. to be paying for all the others who don't or can't work including the social security recipient and they're going to be mad that's a good point they're going to get angry kids people aren't even born now i'm talking about maybe some of the four or five years old, when they get to the point that they're seeing social security taxes be larger than income taxes to pay for all, but they're going to say, what the hell happened in this country before we came along? And they just may revolt and refuse. Uh, people are not going to sit there and just tolerate high taxes. There's, there's a there's a wave now in this country, and it's 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 always simmering under the surface, and sometimes it pops up above the surface. But there is a simmering resentment among many people for being forced to pay and support those who don't work who can. And when it gets to the boiling point, the delineation between who can and can't work is going to get blurred. And people who are being forced to give up more than half of what they earn to pay for other people are just, you know, you're facing result or revolt about it. I, I don't, I, 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 it's a, it's a tough thing. Uh, individually, if you can handle it yourself and not depend on Social Security, you're much better off. But you're still going to get soaked for paying it. That's the only thing. Now, I understand your concern. It's, uh, you're 37 and there are a lot of people younger than you have the same concern. We gotta take a quick break. We'll do it and be back after this. You're listening to the EIB Network. Folks, it's time for me once again to tell you about the Limbaugh letter. My wit and wisdom preserved for the ages. Let me give you the phone number first off for the Limbaugh letter. 1-800-457-4141. Remember, that number, you only call that to order the Limbaugh letter for no other reason. You'll be met with stone silence if you ask any other questions. 800-457-4141 for the Limbaugh letter. Only with a subscription to the Limbaugh letter will you receive, as a bonus, my jumbo list of Clinton's campaign promises and Across the Fruited Plain, which is a complete reference guide. Every radio and TV station on which you can hear or see the Rush Limbaugh show, the time of day the show is on, the call letters, the frequency, and all that of the radio and TV stations. A charter subscription, 12 months. $29.95 is the price. You can't beat that. The Limbaugh Letter, 12 pages every month for $29.95. Call 1-800-457-4141. This is a special announcement. This is a special message from Nationwide Insurance Company to all nationwide policyholders. If your home was damaged by the recent storm, contact your nationwide agent or call Nationwide's 24-hour claims hotline at 1-800-421-3535. That's 1-800-421-3535. 
If you have a homeowner's policy with Nationwide Insurance, you probably are covered for storm damage. Nationwide has made special arrangements to process homeowner, auto, and commercial claims as quickly as possible. Contact your Nationwide agent or call the Nationwide Claims Hotline for help in filing your claim. The Claims Office phone is 1-800-421-3535. That's 1-800-421-3535. You can also see our ad in your daily newspaper. Ooh-wee! Serial port, parallel interface, modem, fax, RS-232-8B, switch your mouse, why this is confusing! Well, stop buying electronics, see the new line of computer accessories. QBS and AIM Electronics can make your computer connection simple. AIM Electronics has a new and expanded inventory of computer accessories. QBS with a complete line of computer accessories at competitive prices and AIM Electronics that you won't believe. QBS and AIM Electronics making the right connections for you. AIM Electronics 411 East Ash Street, Goldsboro. This week at the Pork King, the Hunna Pork Center. Shop and save with these outstanding values. Freshly frozen hot patty sausage, $1.29 a pound for the 10-pound box while they last. Smoke slab bacon, 99 cents a pound, sliced free. Fully cooked smoked loin roast, $1.19 a pound. And the super saver boneless country ham slices. Buy two packages, get one free while they last. There's only one pork king. Nahana Pork Center, Highway 581, one mile west of Nahana School. We're the talk of the town, 1150 WGBR. By the way, those of you who uh, missed the first half hour of this hour because of the president's press conference and you have heard me alluding to what happened, I, I, you, I, I was not being... Um, frivolous when I said we discussed male lesbians, the question came up, where was that call from? That call came in from Tucson. Somebody wanted to know uh, uh, in which direction was the president leaning with his Supreme Court uh, choice that he has to make. And I suggested that uh, in, if, if he wishes to continue his claim to have an administration and a government that represents diversity, that it would be, I think, kill a whole bunch of birds with one stone if you get a male lesbian on the court. Now, this is not, I'm not joking, there is a, there's a feminist instructor, and it's a woman who teaches feminist studies at the University of South Florida in Tampa who claims that post-structural thinking has led to the discovery of the phenomenon known as male lesbians. And so I elaborated on that. I didn't want you to just think I was trying to shock you out of context uh, with this. Uh, so we'll repeat that for you. I think a lot of people need to hear it. This, this will find out. I think the choice gives a great indication of just who is running the show, if we have any doubt about it. Daffodil Festival time and Fremont Pharmacy hopes everyone will come attend and enjoy all the fun exhibits and shows this weekend in Fremont. Fremont Pharmacy has been serving Northern Wayne County for 45 years with pharmacists Keith and Hank Stewart providing prescription service and patient counseling and now computerized prescription records. Fremont Pharmacy on Main Street in Fremont. And they want you to come on up this Saturday during the Daffodil Festival from 10 till 4. The people at McCall's Barbecue and Seafood, Highway 70 and 111 Goldsboro and Highway 55 West in Mount Olive would like to say thank you. Your support of our new store in Mount Olive is greatly appreciated. Our Mount Olive store features the famous luncheon buffet and nightly buffets, plus great takeout specials too. Our store hours are Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Just one taste is all it takes at McCall's Highway 70 and 111 Goldsboro, and now in our new store, Highway 55 West in Mount Olive. News on the hour, every hour, on your first information source, WGBR, Goldsboro's very own. 
From ABC News, I'm Gary Nahn. President Clinton, in his first formal news conference, gives a solid endorsement of Russian President Boris Yeltsin. I want to reiterate that the United States supports the historic movement toward democratic political reform in Russia. President Yeltsin is the leader of that process. He is a democratically elected national leader, indeed the first democratically elected president in a thousand years of Russian history. President Clinton calls Yeltsin's proposal to break the political crisis logjam by letting the people decide April 25th an appropriate step. He says he's gotten no formal indication Yeltsin wants to shift the April 3rd and 4th summit from Vancouver to Moscow. President Clinton also spent some time selling his own economic proposal. This plan sets our country on a new course that honors our oldest values. Moving away from gridlock to action, away from a government that serves only privileged interests to a government that serves the public interest, away from paying for the mistakes of the past and the expediencies of the present toward investing in the needs of the future. Also, the president said he will not ask any potential candidate for the Supreme Court how he or she might decide specific cases. Attorney General Janet Reno says she is eager to work with, work with Congress to pass legislation that will allow women to enter abortion clinics without being harassed. I think that a woman's right to choose should be protected. I think it should be protected from physical conduct that prevents that right to choose from being freely exercised. We know at a news conference that the Justice Department is asking all holdover U.S. attorneys to submit their resignations, saying the Clinton administration is determined to build its own team of government lawyers. Minnesota's House Majority Leader says his 13-year-old son and 15-year-old nephew and their friends used his state telephone access code to run up $50,000 worth of bills. Alan Wells says he knew of the unauthorized use for more than a year, but did not tell authorities about it until last week. You're listening to ABC News. Call Sears today and beat the high cost of heating and air conditioning. Save $100 to $200 on selected Sears Kenmore Central Air Conditioning Systems installed. Contractor license number furnished upon request. Dial toll-free 1-800-859-6000 and we'll tell you how to cut your cooling costs up to 40%. These savings are hot, so don't wait because this sale ends Saturday. Call Sears now at 1-800-859-6000. More than one million Americans have already called to order the American Will Kit, the simple fill-in-the-blank will that lets you make your own will quick and easy. The forms were prepared by lawyers to be valid in every state. Without a will, state laws and not you determine the outcome of your estate. Don't deprive your loved ones. Order the original trusted American Will Kit today, only $14.95 plus shipping. To order by credit card, call toll-free 1-800-982-0500. Sorry, no CODs. Call now, 1-800-982-0500. Fire forced evacuation of the Oregon Capitol building in Salem today. No injuries. It took firefighters about an hour to find out that it was lint smoldering in a ventilation system that caused it. The fire is now out. The building is being ventilated. The Cleveland Indians have canceled spring training games today and tomorrow in Winter Haven, Florida, following the death of pitcher Steve Olin and Tim Cruz in a boating accident. Pitcher Bob Ojeda was seriously injured. The three were in a fishing boat that hit a dock last night on Little Lake Nelly near Claremont. Rescuer Al Morgan helped pull Cruz from the water. He was in real tough shape. Uh, he wasn't coherent, wasn't talking. He moved around a little bit, but uh, he, he wasn't really coherent when we got there. Los Angeles Dodgers manager Tommy Lasorda remembers Cruz. That's really sad to hear that, but all of us in the Dodgers were stunned. Timmy was a tremendous young man. I loved him very much. He always wanted to pitch. He pitched in 60, 70 games for me every year. Tremendous competitor. Cruz and Ojeda played for Lasorda last year. They were signed by the Cleveland Indians as free agents this winter. A memorial service for players and families is scheduled tomorrow night. A federal judge has refused to stand in the way of the proposed takeover by Gillette of Parker Pan, a deal worth about $560 million. Wall Street, Dow Jones Industrials down 0.56 at 3462, 0.92. Volume, 160,300,000 shares. The trading is heavy. This is ABC News. Ow!
Ow, you stepped on my toe. Sorry. Okay, now how do you feel? Low, so low I see into your toe. Now visualize that image to say I'm sorry in Spanish. Low see into your toe? Lo siento means I'm sorry. Oh, that's easy. Lo siento. You too can learn Spanish, French, German, or Japanese. So don't say lo siento, I don't understand. You can. It's easy and fun with National Dynamic Speed Tapes. Just call 1-800-545-1985. 1-800-545-1985. For the ABC Information Network, I'm Gary Nunn. Skies are going to be clouding up a little more during the day. Scattered showers are going to be developing, but boy, we've seen some sunshine already, more than expected, and so the temperatures are warmer than expected. Highs today around 70 to 75. Some of you in the northern counties may just hit the uh, mid to upper 60s, but it's all in all so far been a pretty nice day. There will be showers, though. Clouds and rain and possibly thunderstorms later tonight and tomorrow. Lows tonight 50 to 55. Highs tomorrow 65 to 70. I'm Bill Schmidt at the Weather Center. Thanks, Bill. Right now it's 73 degrees as we return to the Rush Limbaugh Show right after this. Here are some of today's top WGBR news stories. Parents and students challenged by site-based management forum. Former state senate president pro tem Henson Barnes gains another honor. Another police chase and multiple charges. A large cash sum taken in a burglary. For details on these stories and other late-breaking news of Goldsboro and Wayne County, stay tuned to Goldsboro's very own 1150 WGBR. This is Rush Limbaugh on the Talk of the Town, 1150 WGBR. And greetings to you, conversationalists all across the fruited plain. It's a thrill-packed, award-winning, ever-exciting, increasingly popular, unstoppable, more important than ever, Rush Limbaugh program right here on the Excellence in Broadcasting Network. This is a special edition of the Rush Limbaugh program, America Held Hostage. And now, from our studios in New York City, here is Rush Limbaugh. Day 63 of the Raw Deal. We're here in New York, as previously announced, serving humanity and happy that you're with us. Telephone number is 800-282-2882. I want to thank Ron Perlman who is the CEO of Revlon. I'm sitting there in my, in my desk. I ran into him the other night uh, at a restaurant, and uh, he, he um, see, he th I met him at, a, at he threw, he and his uh, uh, wife, Claudia Cohen, threw the uh, book party for Kathy Lee Gifford, to which I was invited. That's where I first met uh, Ron, and very nice guy. And, I ran him at a restaurant the other night, and uh, he just, I guess I was wearing one of my usual signature ties that caused him to notice, whoa, look at that tie, he said. And yesterday, uh, he sent over with a very nice note, a Nicole Miller tie, and do you know what he had, you know, th th this tie, I wondered why he sent this one, and now I know. He sent a tie that had all the comic book superheroes on it. Marvel comic book superheroes on it. And so I get up and I read the pulpier today, the business section. Investor Ronald Perlman wants to boost his stake in Marvel comics to 80%. His holding company says that its uh, new Marvel holding subsidiary, which already owns 60%, will make a cash tender offer for up to 11 million shares, blah, 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 blah. And I'm sitting there, one, and I wanted to wear the tie. I really want, but it's got the Hulk on it, the Incredible Hulk, right, well, no, I mean, I'll show you maybe, but it's got the Hulk right, right where the microphone would attach, and the, you know, the Hulk is a pea green. This tie, you, that's all you'd notice. Ooh, and you would not know it's the Hulk. 
you might think that I'm a slob and spilled something on myself. Uh, had had I had I uh, worn this tie, but it's uh, it's it's just that that green. You know, it's it's the green you never see on a tie. It's the Incredible Hulk pea green. So. I thought uh, I thought he was just sending over a tie because I like flamboyant ties. I didn't know that there was a business connection, but now I do. So anyway, thanks. This is a, a very nice and thoughtful gift from Ron Perlman. All right, now let me let me straighten this out for those of you out there who who think that I have been a little bit disingenuous in discussing male lesbians. We had a conversation here during the president's press conference. Uh, in in which it was asked, who do I think the president is leaning towards his Supreme Court nomination? And I said, I don't know any names. He's only said three things, really. Last July at the Democratic National Convention, he said that he would have a litmus test. This was in his acceptance speech. He would have a litmus test for any judge to be on the court, and it would be that the judge is pro-choice. Prior to that, during his campaign stop at MTV with, uh, what's her name, Tabitha Soren, he then suggested that Mario Cuomo would be a good judge. This, of course, was when Cuomo was running around talking about what a great tax increaser that Bill Clinton was going to be. You can't have that said about you as a candidate, so uh, he was, he mentioned Cuomo as, uh, as a means of, I think, silencing Cuomo more than really meaning it. And now he's, of course, got to deal with that. Then he said, yeah, or, or last week when, uh, when Byron White announced his resignation, uh, President Clinton said that he was going to find someone with a big heart had to have a big heart. Now, I think we all know what that means. I, th I think we all know what he means to say. But he wants to find somebody who's thoughtful and compassionate and a nice guy. My friends, why is it left to me to be the one who has to be brutally frank, brutally honest, cut through all of the mustard? cut to the quick, get to the bottom line. Why is it always me? That's why they call me Mr. Cold Shower. Because I come bearing the freezing, frigid water of truth, and I pour it on virtually every utterance of this administration. My friends, when it comes to interpreting the law, we can have the meanest SOB on the court, as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't matter a hill of beans what the guy's person's personality is, if the person can interpret the law. When you have somebody, now don't tell me that you got to be a nice guy to interpret them. You don't have to be a nice guy. You have to be smart and you have to be honest, but you don't have to be nice. There are plenty of mean people running around that you don't want to be around, but they're smart and they're good at what they do. And there are many nice people who, that's, that's not a criteria here, but I, it all sounds marvelous. And, and it's, it's, it, folks, I am just too bluntly realistic for you, for many of you. This is the, if you, if you want a guy with a big heart, then what you're getting, you want somebody who cares about people and can um, make good law. And of course, that's not what the judge or a justice or the court itself is supposed to do. I suggested during this discussion with the caller that what would be wise would be to perhaps put a, if you want somebody with a big heart, and if, if, you, want, if you want somebody really that's diverse and, and uh, covers, you know, you can kill two birds with one stone or more here, with a male lesbian. Put a male lesbian on the court. There are many male lesbians out there. 
Now you're probably saying, all right, Rusty, this is what we don't like about you. You sit there and you, you, you want us to accept you as a serious commentator. And you want us to take what you say seriously and you want it to have meaning. And then you come out with something like this. A male lesbian on the court. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm only trying to relate to societal trends. I am only trying to illustrate what's going on. Now, you think that I'm making up this male lesbian stuff, and I'm not. There is a woman. I have her name. I just can't remember it. I think this story is down in our TV show file, because I had it down there ready to do. We never got to it. She teaches feminism at the University of South Florida in Tampa. And she says that post-structuralist thinking has led her, and she, which she can't define, has led her to the discovery of male lesbians. A male lesbian, basically, ladies and gentlemen, is a lesbian victimized or trapped inside a male body. And if it weren't for the victimization and the unfairness of being a man, the person inside the male body would, would go and be a lesbian. I think that kind of sensitivity and that kind of experience and that kind of ability to be in touch with oneself to that degree uh, would make one eminently qualified to handle the tremendous judicial challenges that will present themselves before the Supreme Court. In fact, when I first announced the male lesbian phenomenon last week, I got a letter from a friend of mine in Pittsburgh who felt liberated upon hearing the news. He wrote me, Dear Rush, now that I've publicly outed myself as a male lesbian, you can't believe a number of men who've decided to cast off their lives of deception and anguish to join me. It's a groundswell. And all this time I thought I was a male pig just out for my own self-gratification. I operated under the delusion that women turned me on because I was a guy. When in reality, I was a member of the gay community all along. What a relief rush to know that I am now above criticism. I am a gay woman living in, no victimized, no oppressed by my male body. How is some feminista going to find fault with my advances when she finds that I am a sister just trying to practice my lifestyle unencumbered by the forces of discrimination? Did I write all this to you before? Sorry. I did. I'm just having a great time. Male lesbians. I want t-shirts. I want baseball caps. I want my own float in the parade. Signed, Jim. In Pittsburgh. I think, I think, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is uh, a brand new faction of American society previously unknown. There's obviously a large and burgeoning number of these male lesbians out there, and they need representation of what better place than Supreme Court. So, it was under those, <clears throat> what impact will, I, there is no sexual, once you have, this is the whole point of the letter, what impact on sexual harassment? There, there isn't any more. That's, that's the point of the letter. Here, listen again, Mr. Snurdly. Snurdly just asked the dumb question. That's why, why did I go through this? There is no more such thing as sexual harassment now that there are male lesbians. All it, here, let, let me read let me read the passage to you again and I'll explain it. <clears throat> what a relief to know that I am now above criticism. I am a gay woman living in no victimized, no oppressed by my male body. How is some feminista, some woman going to find fault with my advances? i.e. my harassment, my attentions, when she finds that I'm simply a sister. I'm just like her. I'm just trying to practice my lifestyle, unencumbered by the forces of discrimination. So, let's say you, Mr. Snurdly, have a date tonight. And you go out, and you are in the throes of affection. And let's say that that affection is unwanted by the woman with whom you are out with, the sister, so to speak. 
And she gives you grief about it. She says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not really a guy. I'm a lesbian. I'm a trapped in this body. I'm not really a man. You can't hold it against me. I'm being discriminated against. I was born a lesbian, but I'm a man, and I can't help it. I'm not really a man coming at you. I'm a woman. I'm just trying to practice. And you, she's, uh, well, you, the problem is you can't be blamed for what you do in this case because you are admitting that you're gay. So whatever you do, you can't be blamed. This, this, is the, this is the secret that's been revealed. Don't you understand? You now have a legitimate, heartfelt reason for any activity you want because you're gay and therefore you're above criticism. So you just tell her that you're a lesbian trapped in this god-awful male body. What a burden you have to have through life. What a quirk of fate with the chromosomes. Here you are a lesbian, a good-hearted sister all along, but you have been trapped into this male body. You're admitting you're gay, and she cannot accuse you of harassment because that doesn't happen. Gay community. You're, it just, because only love and affection and all that take place. So, <clears throat> don't you understand? This, this is why we need somebody like this on the court, to be able to explain this and interpret this in our matter of law body of law. Very, very relevant. Now, hang on. I've just been handed a note here. <clears throat> Bill Clinton finished... He what? He did what? See, I'm just now finding out what he did in his press conference. I can't believe this. Now, this is impossible. This is absolutely impossible. Listen to this. The president finished up his press conference by denying that any of his economic stimulus package contains pork barrel projects such as golf courses or swimming pools. He's denying that those things are in there? This stuff's in the congressional record. Members of Congress, Democrats, stood on the floor of the House of Representatives and read off some of the things in this package. And he's denying it? He says opponents of the plan drummed up those supposed projects by asking agencies for every idea that community developed money could be used for. He says people could read the economic stimulus package measure for years, it's probably how long it would take, and they'd never find any mention of specific projects. Oh, really?